Hey guys, welcome back to Wentworth Life, the channel that talks all things Wentworth. Now, if this is your first time here, then you guys know what to do. Hit that subscribe button right now for all future updates. So, we are up to Wentworth Season 4, Episode 6, Divide and Conquer. And just a little bit of a warning here, guys, that this episode does feature both suicide and self-harm, which I will be delving into. So, if you are watching this video today and you're feeling really low then please reach out to a friend or a family member and always remember you are loved you are not alone and you are needed on this earth Okay then guys, so B, Ali and Juice, they are all released from the slot at the very start of the episode. Maxine, she goes to the hospital to have her scans done so you know the doctors know what they are dealing with and they know how to treat Maxine going forward. And Doreen, oh, she finally, finally gets her conjugal visit with Nash and the pair of them, they end up having wild, passionate sex all over the room. It's a really sad outcome outcome for Maxine though because the scan they reveal that the cancer has spread to both of her breasts. Now this is just awful, it's terrible because Maxine she's transitioned from male to female and now there's a doctor saying that there is a probably very high probability that she's gonna have to lose both of her breasts if she's to stand any chance of survival. Oh god I can imagine it is Maxine's worst nightmare. Now, when Maxine gets back to the prison, she carries on being quiet about all of this, and I tell you what, I love you to bits, Maxine, but I just want to shake you hard. B, on the other hand, she is getting a lot of grief from Juice and a lot of the other women as well about Tasha, who Maxine let off with a warning in the last episode. Now, even though Maxine got a lot of respect for what she did from some of the women, there are still, you know, a lot of other women in the prison who think that Tasha got off far too lightly. With B being the top dog, she now has to wrestle with the decision to punish Tasha. Otherwise, she does risk losing the respect of the other women, and that is not good for a top dog. Now, as we all know, B does end up punishing Tasha in this episode, and Juice and her crew, they end up grabbing Tasha, they drag her into the shower block, and then B arrives. For a moment there, Tasha thought that she was about to be saved. Not gonna lie, guys, I thought that as well. But then B, she ends up bringing out a shiv. And when I say my heart dropped when I first saw this moment, you've got to remember, Tasha is only 18 years old. I might, I might have said in the last video that she was 17, but when I did a quick Google search today, she is indeed 18. But that's still very, very young. Think about it. If B's daughter, Debbie had not been killed off, you know, at, towards the end of season one. Debbie would be around Tasha's age at this stage. Of course, this was going around in B's brain, but what can she do? It's mentioned in the series that B didn't create these rules. She only inherited them, and you know, if she's gonna be the top dog, then she has to abide by the rules. Also, think back to the moment where B ended up burning both of Boomer's hands. We all love Boomer. Maybe not as much, you know, at that time when she just, you know, after she bashed Liz, but B had to punish Boomer for going against her order. So if you think about it, it can't be, you know, one rule for one, like one rule for Boomer, and then a different one for Tasha. It is a horrible, vicious circle in prison, but guess what? Life is tough at the top. So later on, while the women are all out in the yard, we see Juice and the girls, they're throwing mud and some rotten fruit at Tasha, who is curled up into a ball on the floor with her hood up. Now Doreen, she goes over to see what the hell is going on and she sees that it's Tasha. Now when Doreen gets the women to stop what they're doing and she takes off Tasha's hood, this is where we see that B has actually cut off Tasha's hair using the shiv. It's quite upset in to see and Doreen is really really shocked when she learns that it's B because B says she did it in front of all of the women even Kaz is there looking really shocked in the background and probably a little bit disappointed but as we all know later on down the line Kaz will face these very similar battles herself 
So this drama with Tash is what kicks off a chain of events with a little bit of help from good old Joan Ferguson that starts to cause some major friction in B's main crew. Not only with B and Doreen, but also with B and Maxine because Joan, she starts going around and chatting with Boomer saying that Maxine was fantastic last week in showing compassion to Tasha and that Maxine, she would be a way better top dog, planting all of those little poisonous seeds into Boomer and the rest of the women and watching those grow. And things get even worse for B and even better for Joan. There is a scene where Joan goes over to comfort Tasha in the yard. Tasha's like sitting there, she's all on her own. But Joan does the ultimate evil seed planting when she ends up manipulating a very low and depressed Tasha into doing something terrible to herself. Basically telling Tasha that, you know, she's in prison for a long, long time. She's a long way from home. Can't see any way out for you, love. Maybe you shouldn't just hang around. Oh God, Joan, you bitch. So with Tasha feeling so low, she decides that she wants to end her life. And she does this by ripping up some of the sheets in her unit. And then she ties them all together and goes to the shower block. We all know what Tasha is about to do. And when Doreen finds Tasha's ripped sheets in the cell, she runs to the shower block where we see Joan Ferguson doing CPR on Tasha and saves her life. Oh, look. I'm glad Tasha was saved, but it makes my blood boil that everything is just working in Joan's favor. And at the same time, everything is going super sour for B. And this, of course, gives Doreen even more ammunition against B for the rest of the episode. To be fair though, Doreen is a little bit stressed out because Nash, he ends up telling Doreen at the start of the episode that he is struggling to find a job and a place to live and he can't, you know, he needs help. And that he, basically he has a female friend who has offered for him and baby Joshua a room in her place. Now, at first, Doreen is like, that's fantastic. Go for it, babe. And then good old Boomer tells Doreen that she is crazy. He's going to be banging this chick into next week. <laughs> boomer so doreen starts getting super paranoid and self-conscious and in the end she asks kaz to find out who this woman is now when kaz finds out this information it turns out it's nash's ex the same ex who you know he had a child with you know so omg now if i was in doreen's situation i would probably be going crazy my jealous streak would be out and i would be like get the freak out of your ex's house it doesn't look good does it especially when you're in prison i mean nash he also left out that little detail to doreen oh dear me nash anyway doreen ends up phoning him in anger and later on nash comes back into the prison to visit doreen and assures her that there is nothing to worry about he and his ex are just co-parenting there's no feelings there anymore they're just making it work for the time being and i'm not sure if it's in this episode or in the next one but nash does end up persuading doreen to meet his ex before making any judgments i mean i would still be stressing about it if, you know if i'm honest but i mean what would you guys be like if you were if this was happening to you let me know i'd be very interested to hear in the comments box below so doreen you know she's in a very stressful mood in this episode and maybe she's taking some of that out on b and isn't using a clear head but Oh God, but it all goes from like bad to worse to worse to worse. When B ends up confronting Maxine about these rumors that she's been hearing of Maxine taking over as top dog and Maxine bless her, she's so upset and she's furious at B for even thinking that these kind of rumors are true. And Maxine, she ends up snapping and shouting at B, telling her that she is loyal to her because she ended up delaying her cancer treatment. And now the doctor have to cut off her breasts. Meanwhile, Doreen, she's in the unit and she's overhearing all of this heated conversation. Oh, it's so sad. It really, really is. Now, B, she never would have wanted Maxine to delay any kind of cancer treatment had she known how bad it was. I mean, don't forget, Maxine did play it down to B, but I can totally understand why Maxine is upset and angry at B during this scene. But the final scene in this episode, I just, oh, I absolutely hate it. And Doreen really, 
really pisses me off. With the news of Maxine's cancer now all spread around the prison, in the dining room, Doreen says to be in front of all of the women that, you know, be you're just not there for us. And basically, you know, says that she's stuffed up with Maxine. And this just, <laughs> it just doesn't go down very well. In fact, it really, really upsets B. And she ends up throwing her dinner across the table. And then, oh God, I hate this bit. But it's just an awkward, horrible silence. And then Boomer, she comes over to this silent table. Doreen, she then gets up and goes over and sits down with Kaz, Joan, and the rest of the right, you know, red right hand. And I just hate it. I hate Doreen for doing this. I've said this in a few other videos over the years, but the way Doreen just drops B after B saved her son in the prison fire, you know, only about six or seven episodes ago is just wow. Now, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that Doreen can't have her own opinion on things. Of course she can, but... B saved her son. She risked her own life doing it. Now, if you have a grievance against B, do, you know, save it for the unit. Save it in private. Don't do it in front of all of the women and Joan and Kaz and then leave B's crew and go and sit with them. I just don't think that was clever of Doreen and I don't think there's any coming back from that. And Doreen, she really goes down in my estimations from here going forward. Remember when I was saying that Liz seemed to have little to no storylines for the first half of this season? Well, buckle up guys because Storm Sonia Stevens, she is blowing in and she is about to turn Liz's life upside down and not in a good way. A police officer called Don Kaplan, he comes in to see Liz and he explains to her that this new inmate's coming in called Sonia Stevens. She's going to be on remand, but she's on remand for the murder or the suspected murder of Helen Masters. Now, Helen, her body hasn't been found. She's essentially missing. But they suspect that Helen is no longer with us and Sonia did it. So he ends up telling, Son uh, telling Liz that he wants her to try and get some sort of confession out of Sonia that Liz can then pass on to the police. And in return, Liz will have a full and free pardon from the prison and start a whole new life on the outside. Now, at first, Liz refuses to do this. Liz knows only too well what can happen to laggers. But after Liz sees a news report of Helen's children on the news, you know, doing a little bit of a news bulletin, they really want to find their mum. And then later on, when Liz finally meets Sonia coming into the prison, Liz decides that she will do it. Oh. Now, I can remember when I first saw this, I just knew this wasn't going to be plain sailing and it wasn't going to end well. And I just knew there was going to be loads of twists and turns. But most of all, I was really, really concerned for Liz. I was really concerned for her safety. And I can totally understand why she ended up saying yes. If you were in prison for a long time and you've got loads more years in front of you and someone is saying to you, just give me this information and you will be pardoned and released from jail. No questions asked to start a new life. I mean, yeah. I can see why Liz finally ended up saying yes. Back over to Maxine, just very quickly, her slime ball ex-partner Gary comes in to see her because Maxine, she wants Gary to sort out her sperm that she had frozen ages ago. And they basically, they had this plan a, you know, a while back that Gary's sister, I think it was, I could be wrong, I'm sure it's Gary's sister, she was going to use Maxine's sperm and try for a baby. But Gary, oh God, he's horrible, an absolute slime ball. He clearly has his own issues here and he ends up refusing and telling Maxine that his sister hates her and yeah, he's just vile to her. Oh, enough said about Gary. Go away, Gary. Vera is still a little bit school girly over Jake in this episode and by the end of the episode Jake, he ends up leaning in and kissing Vera while they are alone in a lift. I mean, just look at Vera's face. She really, really enjoyed that. I think she's also in a little bit of shock. I bet she's like, oh my god, he kissed me. <laughs> oh, bless Vera Bennett. And B and Ali, well, B is continuing to self-harm. And Ali, 
she ends up catching B right in the act. And it's really, really sad to see, but at the same time, I'm really glad that Ali caught her. And from now on, going forward, Ali can help her. And I'm just like, oh. So a very emotionally charged episode. I think in my last video, one of you guys wrote a really good comment saying that season four was definitely uh, the sad season. And that is absolutely spot on. I could not agree more. My favorite part of this episode is Sonia's arrival. There's actually a really funny moment where just before um, Sonia comes into the yard, Liz is sitting on a bench with her eyes closed as if she's about to snooze off for a little nap. And then Will calls Birdsworth and then Liz is like, Yo! <laughs> My least favourite part of this episode is the moment where Doreen leaves B's crew and joins Kaz and Joe. Not okay with that. I'll never get over it. But now, let's hear some of your thoughts on this episode. What are your favourite moments and your least favourite moments? And were you just as annoyed as I am with Doreen? Let me know everything, guys, in the comments box below. Okay then, guys. Thank you all for watching today's video. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you all again very, very soon.